truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glory of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. Close by me forever. 
We had a little mix up on the words. Sorry about that. Luckily, they played stuff everybody pretty much knows, which is nice, isn't it? So before we look at how an average Joe helps save the world, I got to tell you a little bit about our Bridge Builders uh, kickoff that we had Thursday night. We had a heck of a shindig, did we not? Yeah. I'm going to tell you now. More food than you can shake, shake a stick at. I mean, I, you know, I'm a big guy. and I, I got more than I needed. We had lots of food left over. We had a lot of fun. We had over 50 people show up, 16 visitors. 12 of them, I believe, had never been in the building before. So that's a success. Um, I wanted to tell you something about that, though. Okay? I want to show you. You see this right here? That is not the church. That's not the church. This is not the church. I want you to understand this. It's important. The body of Christ is Heidi Oaks. The body of Christ is my beautiful wife, Kim. Ron and the meat Nazi, Ro uh, Robin. She was a meat Nazi. <laughs> Mary, who played for us. We had so many people who volunteered and, and, and helped us. Jenny, Mark, Faith, and her friend, the whole Harold family was in on it. That's the church. I want you to understand that. That's the church. It's important. It was a big success. We're going to do it again at Easter, and I can't wait. I can't wait to do it again. So I hope you guys will consider joining us. Probably going to do some kind of a breakfast deal or something. I'll have to test the food several times <laughs> between now and then before we settle in on anything, right? You understand that, you know? How an average Joe helps save the world. Tomorrow we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the coming of our Lord and Savior. But, you know, some stuff had to happen just before his birth. So I want to look at that. I'm going to look at faith. In fact, I want to look at an enormous faith, a faith that helps save the world. Now, I'm hoping that the scriptures and stuff are going to be on the screen behind you. I'm sorry for the mix-up on the, the words um, to the music. And it should be in your outline also, in the sermon outline. I want to look at Matthew chapter 1. We'll pick it up in verse 18 and look at the, the birth of Jesus. It says, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. So right off the bat, we find Joseph, our average Joe, in a tough spot, right? I mean, what if it were you? You guys, get with me for a minute. Think about it. You're cruising around in life, right? You're making a few bucks. You're hanging out with the guys. You're fishing. All of a sudden, one day, you look up, and there's this chick, and you can't get her off your mind, right? Happened for me in a distribution center in Glendale, Arizona in 1986. <laughs> she had a bright red sweatshirt and a smile this big, and I just had to get over there and get close to her. Problem was, Kim had this boyfriend. His name was Super Bob. That was actually his name. He was all muscly and nice and charming and... I was none of that, you know. But I started hanging around, and pretty soon I'm getting closer and trying to get to know her a little bit, you know. And um, I'm betting Joseph was doing the same thing, don't you think? Young guy meets Mary, can't get her off his mind. Everything's cool. He's abiding by all the cultural and religious rules of the day, of course. He was a good guy. I'm sure he was nervous and stressed out about to take the biggest step of his life, right? And, you know, guys, guys get pretty anxious around that time, you know? So everything's cruising along, and all of a sudden, what happens? Bang, she shows up pregnant. Then to add insult to injury, she says, well, I didn't do anything. It's from the Holy Spirit. Well, Joseph's got to be thinking, hmm, the Holy Spirit, right, you know? Let's pick it up in verse 19. It says, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. See, it seems to me that our average Joe was a pretty good guy, you know? I mean, I'm thinking most of us in that situation would be upset, angry, frustrated, hurt, wouldn't be thinking about doing anything quietly, right? But Joseph wanted to do the right thing, even if Mary hadn't done the right thing. Even if he was all tangled up and knotted up inside, he still wanted to do the right thing. That's our average Joe. So let's pick up the rest of Matthew chapter 1. 
said, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and he will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded and took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. So our average Joe had an enormous faith, didn't he? He really did. And God honored that faith. He used Joseph's faith in a big way, a huge way. You know, he was just an average Joe, as far as we know. Scripture doesn't tell us a lot about Joseph. Um, other than what he did here to be Jesus' earthly father, we don't see that he really did much else. So he was an average Joe, but he helped save the world because he had a huge faith. You know, I thank God for Joseph. I thank God for his faith and the example he set for all of us in Scripture. And I thank God for all the average Joes in our world, those who believe and those who act in faith. I thank God. I'll give, you, I'll give you a couple examples. I thank God for Pastor Tom White. He's not here tonight. They're traveling with family. But I tell you, nobody's ever invested in me like Tom. And he's invested in this church real heavy. He's a good man. He lets his faith lead his, his life. I thank God for our elders, Bob, Gary, Rosie, and Skip, for letting their faith lead this church. That's important. I thank God for the lovings the Brazzles and the Whites for cleaning up. I don't know if you guys know this. Every week, you guys, you guys, not me, y'all come in and make a big mess. <laughs> and they go around and clean up after you, right? I mean, they're, they're motoring around here right after service every Sunday. And then they come back in the middle of the week and they finish it up. Some other people help them, but those three families, they, they're there every week. Cleaning up after you guys, okay? I thank God for Mary, Peg, Cindy. Kim, for the blessing of worship music every week. I want to tell you something. I come in here and practice, and I watch them. And it's not always easy for them. It's hard to get behind a microphone and sing to people sometimes, isn't it? But y'all lead in faith, and you do that for us every week. I thank God for Jenny and Faith, who took the booth for me tonight. Cindy and Dave, Stacy and Luke, for getting the word out to the world every week through our digital ministry. It's so important. They have no idea what they're doing. And you know how I know that? Because I trained them and I don't have any idea what I'm doing. So they can't know what they're doing. But they do it every week. I thank God for Rebecca. We miss them. They're already they're, they're gone for six weeks. They just left yesterday and we already miss them. For the heart she has for the children's church. You know, we got a new, a new kids thing we just started called Kingdom Kids for letting her faith lead her into a position where she can have a lifelong impact on these kids. I thank God for, for Rebecca. I thank God for Mary, because Mary's going to cover it for the next six weeks for us, because otherwise we wouldn't have Children's Church. See, I think if you were to ask any of those people, they'd probably tell you they're just average Joes. But they let their faith lead them, don't they? Number one in your outline, God never calls the qualified. He always qualifies the called. That's really important. He never calls the qualified. Do you know why he never calls the qualified? Because we can't be qualified. None of us can be qualified. You know, I mean, just the fact he lets us utter his name is a miracle. Really. He never calls the qualified, but guess what? He always calls the called. That's us. In a world that's just stock full of average Joes, Joseph let his faith lead the way, and because of that, he helped save the world. So what can God do through you, through your faith? How can he change the world if you let your faith in him lead the way? Number two in your outline, see, God doesn't need you to know what you're doing. Look at me. I have no clue what I'm doing. None. I'm telling you. He doesn't need you to know what you're doing. Do you think Joseph knew what he was doing? Think about that. When Mary showed up pregnant and the angel said, oh, it's okay, take her home as your wife. Do you think he had a clue what he was doing? 
What about when the angel said, hey, don't worry, man. What was conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And guess what? This baby will save his people from their sins. I guarantee you our average Joe didn't have a clue what he was doing. You can bet your buddy didn't. But guess what? He did it anyway because he had faith. He had faith. See, God doesn't need you to know what you're doing because he does. He does. Just trust him. Number three in your outline, God doesn't need you to be experienced. Now, don't get me wrong. If you've got an area you know, where you've got some experience, some knowledge, some passion, whatever, and you want to find a way to use that to serve God, look me up. I'll put you to work somehow, some way. But he doesn't need you to be experienced. That's not what he's looking for. He doesn't need you, number four in your outline, he doesn't need you to be talented. Again, I'm proof. You don't have to have any talent to serve God. Number five, all he does is ask you to trust him. It's really that simple. Just trust him. Now, tomorrow we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. I think it's amazing that we have a God who loves us enough to come down to this crummy place for these crummy creatures. Sorry, but we're all crummy. As amazing as his birth is, his life and ministry were even more amazing. His death, more amazing still. And his resurrection, the icing on the cake. All because he trusted and obeyed the Father. And an average Joe with a huge faith had a hand in it. And we're still talking about him 2,000 years later. Father, thank you. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for your, your love, your promise. Thank you for sending your son down here for us. We could never earn it. We could never deserve it. I don't think we could ever calculate it your love. Thank you. We love you and we thank you for everything you've done for us. Be with us now as we celebrate, continue to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Amen. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to light some candles. The reason we're going to do that is because this world is a dark place, is it not? It, it, it can be dark. The enemy has a real foothold why is it dark? Well, 1 Peter 5 a says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The enemy's out there. The enemy is out there. He's just looking for an opportunity to separate you from God. But there is an answer. The answer is Jesus. Jesus is the light of the dark in a dark world. He really is. John 8, 12, this is Jesus talking. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What do you think about that, the light of life? Boy, that'd be pretty good, don't you think? The Greek word for follow that Jesus used there was, I'm going to mess this up, akleatheo, something like that. It means to accompany or to be a disciple of a leader's teaching. If we follow him, if we accompany him, let him accompany us in our life, he'll light the path for us. He came to be the light in this world. He really did. So we're going to light these candles. The idea here is that Jesus came to be the light in the world, and we're supposed to allow him to be the light in our world and to share that light with everybody else. So I'm going to go around and, and get you guys started on this, and if you would, just light the next person's, but always take the unlit candle go over to the lit candle instead of the other way around. Okay, so I'll light yours and you put yours over here. Yeah, keep the lit one straight. See, once in a while the light goes out. It's not him. It's us, right? It's all us.
My prayer for each of you tonight is that you let Jesus light your path. Let him light your path. I can tell you from personal experience, life is a lot better when you let him light your path. Mm -hmm. So basically, happy birthday, Jesus. Let's all blow the candles out, eh? Amen. The girls got another song to take us out on. We got some food afterwards. Merry Christmas, everybody. We need the children to help us, and I see one on that side. They need a bell because the children need to ring bells. And, and if some, if you see some hands up for some adults, they want to be a child too, and it's okay. <laughs> Dick is a child. He wants bells. <laughs> Spells, light the Christmas tree. Jesus is our King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells. Everybody say, Jesus, we remember back. this your birthday. Everybody likes to take a holiday. Everybody likes to take a rest. Spending time together with the family, sharing lots of love and happiness. Come on, ring those bells, light you the Christmas the tree. Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Celebrations come because of something good. Celebrations we love to recall. Mary had a baby boy in Bethlehem. The greatest celebration of them all. Come on, ring those bells. Christmas tree, Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say, Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Bells, ring the bells, let the whole world know, Christ was born. Die that man might live. 
11 o'clock tomorrow, we'll have a regular service. We won't have adult Sunday school. We're going to look at how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. I'll be here. I know he'll be here. So hopefully y'all be here too, okay? Merry Christmas. Go get some food. The children can keep those.